Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm really excited to do this. First, if this is the first video that you're watching of mine, my name is Erin and I mainly just post videos about books at the moment. And then whenever I'm led, I also post strictly faith content, if that makes sense. Because some of these books are Christian books, so my faith does come in with that. But I also post separate videos related to my faith. Okay, so with that said, there's quite a few books for me to talk about. This video is being posted like later than I expected. It's like the end of November at this point. But I'm going to talk about my five-star reads. Um some books that I DNF'd, and some other stuff. So I will just jump right into it. First, um, I'm going to talk about Even Better Than Eden. I literally finished this today. It took some time since I am in school. I'm also just like a slow reader, and I've just been doing other things. But I finished it. Five-star read as I expected it to be. It's really good. I don't think there is a single chapter where I didn't underline something. So what this book is about, it basically takes you through different themes in the Bible and shows you how that pertains to your personal life. There's nine themes in the book. The conclusion will basically give a summary of each of those themes. And I just overall think this is a good book. I like how she traced the story from the Garden of Eden and showed how that story tied into all of the other stories that you read about in the Bible. I just think that if you're interested in doing like a topical study or kind of want more of an overview of the Bible, this can be a really good place to start. It's not necessarily, um, it's not Bible commentary, right? It is just a Christian book. But I really, really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Um, my, I, Not that I had a favorite chapter, but I think the one that I really connected with and want to try to apply to my life is the story of the Sabbath. So she really goes into that theme in the Bible and why the Sabbath is important. I loved her writing. I thought it was very conversational. Um, easy to read. Towards the end, I did rush through it, admittedly, and that's just because I wanted to finish the book because there would be like just days, you know, of me not reading it. And so it was hard to get back into because of that. But as a whole, it was a very good book and very engaging. Again, I gave it five stars. Um, just really good themes. So if there are I'm trying to find it. Yeah, if there's certain themes that you're interested in learning about, like the Sabbath, um, identity, or just wanting to get like an overview of the Bible from, you know, somebody else's perspective, I think it's good. Um, yeah, I also love the little touches. Like, I really like the cover. And then in the conclusion, Instead of doing bullet points, the bullet point is like a leaf. And so I just like those little touches. But yeah. Next up, I read, oh, that author is called, that author is called, <laughs> the name of the author is Nancy Guth, Guthrie. Yeah, that's what it looks like though. And then going on to the next book. So I'll just show you. Stewards of Eden by Sandra L. Richer. I gave a five stars. I cannot even believe that it ended up being a five star read for me. Again, you heard, probably heard this if you watched my other video. It was like a reading vlog for October, but I previously DNF'd this book. I thought that the way that it was written fit it better fit students who were like studying theology the the text felt very like academic to me but I listened to this book um on audio and 
it just had like a different feel. I felt like it was a bit easier to understand. I also have been in school and learning more stuff related to the environment. So that does kind of help. But this time around, I thought this book was just very, very impactful. I appreciated it so much. So what this is about is basically what the scripture says about the environment, what the scripture says about caring for the environment. Why does it matter for us as Christians to care about, you know, different topics like the treatment of animals, um, even just like the treatment of land. And I'm trying to flip through this to kind of see environmental terrorism just so many things and she really does a good job of giving you scriptures and walking you through different um stories in the bible and how it connects to that and yeah i just found it eye-opening sorry if that's not like a good explanation but it was just wow it says that she is an expert in ancient Israelite society and economy as well as biblical theology. So she does talk about the Israelite society and how the laws that God gave to the Israelites, even things regarding land, can be um, very good models for us today on like how we should care for the land. Maybe not doing things exactly like them, but yeah, it's, it's just good. If you're interested in learning more about how to care for the environment and wondering like if that is your duty as a Christian, of course, you should read the Bible and pray. And then this can be like a good thing to kind of supplement with your reading. So anyway, I gave it a five stars. Wow. The next books that I'm going to talk about are um, Little Women and Little Men. So if you have never read Little Women, you may have heard of it or like seen the movie, but um, there's a whole series. So it's Little Women, Little Men, and Joe's Boys. So I read Little Women back in like September, I want to say, but I think I didn't finish it until October. Yeah, I gave it a 4.5 stars. It was really good. Basically, this book is kind of a coming-of-age story, I would say, where you follow four sisters and you basically just kind of see them grow up. I'm going to have to put um, down here something like what time period this is taking place in because I don't know if it's like 19th century or what. I don't know. I don't know my history, but um, it does take place, you know. A long time ago but the the writing um, is not like too difficult to read I learned actually that because it's an American book versus like Pride and Prejudice which I think is like German and then it got like translated um, it's a bit easier to read because of that but anyway it's a coming-of-age story it follows these four sisters um, Joe Meg Amy and Beth, that was not in the order of their age, by the way. And you basically just see them growing up. I think the book has good, like, moral aspects to it. Um, you definitely see them, like, learn to conduct themselves in a... I don't know how to explain it. But they're parents instill into them like good morals and then there's that underlying underlying like faith aspect in Little Women so I really like it um there I liked the ending as well I liked who Joe ended up with not gonna spoil that if you haven't read it or watched the movie but I just liked that a lot and um even the description of the person that she ended up with was pretty cool. So, yeah, it was great. <laughs> I mean, I I had seen the movie before reading the book, but now after reading the book, I felt like there was so much more um, depth to the book that I just appreciate it a lot. 
And obviously I enjoyed it enough to read the sequel, which was Little Men. So Little Men, I also, no, Little Men, I gave a four star rating. So just four stars, not 4.5. But it follows Joe and her husband and Basically, they have this, it's not an orphanage, they have this school, and so they bring in different boys into the school, and it's kind of like, they're bringing in, like, boys that are, like, off the streets, right, who can't um, afford it or anything, but it is somehow, like, funded. I think if I say how, that might be a spoiler, so I'm gonna leave it out, but yeah, they're basically um, taking care of these kids and teaching them, you know, like their regular academics, but they're also kind of like a, a mother and a father to them, right? They have two kids of their own. I forget their names, but it's really about the boy's life. So you don't hear like too much about Joe and like her husband. You're really getting the backstory of these different boys. It was actually really good. Like, when I first started reading it, I wasn't sure if I was going to care about these new characters. Because I guess something about me is that when I read a book, and I've already invested into these characters, and then the second book comes out and they're showing me new characters, I'm just always kind of, like, hesitant. Like, am I really going to care about them? But um, I did. Like, those boys are so sweet and it was just like such a reminder that children need love and discipline and someone to not give up on them so I felt like it just had a really good like almost spirit of um when I say spirit I mean like it just had a good like feel to it that kind of reminds you about like the importance of like adoption even fostering like just caring for children that you know may not be cared for in life so it was great um I did bump the rating down for two reasons one reason is really small well I don't know maybe it's small maybe it's not you to tell me I guess but one of the reasons that I bumped it down is because in one of the chapters it said that the love of money is the root of all evil and um, that scripture gets like said incorrectly. I probably used to say it like that too, but the actual scripture in the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. So it's just kind of like, yeah, I'm particular about that, I guess. The other reason that I bumped it down is because at the very end of the book, they are celebrating Thanksgiving. I was actually reading the end of this book like as Thanksgiving was about to approach. So I thought that was really cute and I was excited. But the way that they described like what Thanksgiving was about, I feel didn't, um, it didn't show, I don't know what the word is. It didn't acknowledge what Native Americans went through and how Thanksgiving may not be something very happy and joyous and worth celebrating for Native Americans. You know, they were just treated very poorly. And so, yeah, the fact that that wasn't mentioned, I don't know if maybe it's because of the time period. Like, I don't know if it would have got published if she tried to kind of mention that thing but I just personally didn't like that so I had to bump it down also in this book um Joe and her husband they have like a servant or like a cook that they hired I believe and that cook is black which I was happy that there was a black character in her book but I would have liked to hear at least a little bit of something about the cook's like story and background I think that that would have been great just to acknowledge what black people would have been going through during her time period but she didn't really other than the cook just being there like there really wasn't um mention of her story so that's why I um bumped it down it was still a book that I really enjoyed, so it was just those little things, which is why I still gave it a four stars, because I still thought, like, the writing was really good. 
I appreciate her writing as well. I think it's very interesting how she just like plainly talks to the readers. Like sometimes she'll just address the readers and say, okay, now I'm going to describe this thing. And I didn't think that you could like do that when you were writing a book, but seeing how she did it was cool. I think every author that I read, um, I tend to appreciate like some aspect of their writing. So yeah, I gave those 4.5 stars for Little Women and 4 stars for Little Men. And I definitely do want to read Joe's Boy, so hopefully I can just like finish that series. And now I will talk about um, the books that I DNF. So first I will mention The Yellow Bird Sings by Jennifer Rosner. Oh, I keep forgetting to say the authors, but Little Women and Little Men is written by Louisa May Alcott. So, okay. The Yellow Bird Sings, I didn't get past like a couple of pages. Um, this book is about Rosa and her five-year-old daughter, Shira, and they're basically trying to sur survive because they are Jews. And um, this is during the time that like Hitler is, you know, basically killing all of these Jewish people, right? So they're in hiding. In the opening stage, they're hiding in this barn and it looks like they're not going to be able to stay there for much longer. The descriptions of just like, like actions that the character is doing, I thought were kind of like, mm. like when I start to get that like feeling like, hmm, I don't know if I really want to like, or I don't know if I really like where this is going. It's probably like, probably a good reason to DNF. But anyway, I would just say that there are some very m mature themes in here. And it was basically hinting at the fact that she was going to end up selling her body essentially to the guy whose barn she's staying in so that her and her daughter could stay there. Um, I know that those things happen. It's very sad. And there's obviously going to be stories in books where the, the storyline is about something that is naturally going to have mature themes like that. I just didn't like how it was written. I, I do feel like sometimes you can talk about those things in a different way that maybe isn't so detailed. But that's just me. It was, it was too much for me. So I went ahead and I DNF'd it before I even got too far for my own piece. <laughs> um, and I'll get into the next book that I DNF'd, which is called Flowers for Algernon. I think the author's name is Daniel Keyes, but it will be up on the screen. The reason I was so quick to DNF this book is because I didn't quickly DNF Flowers for Algernon and I did deal with some consequences because of that. So Flowers for Algernon is a very interesting book that you may have read when you were in high school for an English class. That's when I read it. Now I'm realizing that we might have read the short story versus the full novel, which is what I read this time around. I listened to this book on audio. Um, and okay, so the book is about this man. He is mentally and developmentally challenged. And basically, these doctors are doing this experiment. They've started this experiment on a rat. His name is Algernon, and they've seen really good results where basically they're doing brain surgery on you to make you smarter. So um, what is the guy's name in Flowers for Algernon? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I only remember the rat's name and not, not the guy's name, but... Anyway, um, this guy, he has to keep like all these progress reports, right, before the surgery and then afterwards so that they can see if he's getting smarter. Well, you are basically learning about his life through the progress reports, which I think is really interesting. It's written very fast paced. Um, and I actually do like the premise of the book and the different things that they discuss, like just different moral things, because as 
he as he becomes more intelligent as you see um he also starts to like remember different things that happen with his family he starts to question like things that maybe are not um morally right that are going on at his like workplace so it's a lot it's it's really truly interesting i will say that the novel it's just kind of heavy because as he starts to remember the past he's remembering um that his mother was actually pretty abusive towards him and so like again it goes back to the way that things are described right you can mention something like that in a book but the way that they described it was very detailed there's also some sexual scenes in this novel which i of course prefer there to not be any kind of like scenes like that in books that I'm reading so yeah I had to skim through different things and yeah it just became so like like heavy feeling and it just had this weird feeling to me that I didn't like that at the end I just ended up using spark notes to see like what happened and then leaving it at that like towards the end of the book but I had already listened to so much that like it did have an effect on me. So yeah, I had to DNF it. It was still like, I thought it was still a really good plot. You know, if you're able to read something like that, then you know, you're able to read it. But I just was not able to finish it. So I had to DNF it. Um, yeah, so those are the two books that I did not finish. And then, so I think, I'm trying to remember oh I skipped something I also read the winding ways quilt which I gave a 3.5 stars um this is a book by Jennifer Shiverini I have read a lot of books in her series usually the ratings that I give her books are around four stars so this one was just a little bit lower not bad and the book was basically kind of a transition piece. It's about this group of friends who have worked together and really built um, this business together, this quilt camp. And some of the characters are leaving. So you're getting to kind of hear their backstory and their, their lives. And so it's a nice like exit for them as we see um, new characters come in. But I just didn't feel like the writing was as strong in this one and um yeah overall i guess i just didn't enjoy it as much but i still like the series as a whole and in the future you know i may continue finishing that series because there's a lot of books in there like 12 or 13 so i don't even know like what book i'm on but overall i just didn't feel like it was the best that she's um, written and I didn't think that it was a four star read this time around. So yeah, I almost forgot about that. And then lastly, I wanted to say that I am currently reading Cherish by Kim Cash Tate. So I had been kind of mentioning this book and I was saying how, you know, oh, it, like, it's cool. It's a book. I don't really have any thoughts on it. Well, now I am on chapter 22. I actually ended up using my Hoopla app and downloading it as an ebook. So that's how I've been reading through it. And it's a really fast read. I don't know how much I realized that before, but like the chapters go by pretty quickly. And um, as you saw in my vlog, I have those glasses now that block out the blue light. So now I can read this on my ebook with those glasses and I'm able to like read a bit more and not have as many problems. Guys, I actually really, really enjoy this book. I don't know what my rating will be. I want to see who is going to end up with who. Not that the book is all about like couples, but I'm just like curious to know. Um, really, really good. I haven't read a Christian fiction book like this in a while, if ever. Like, I can't remember a Christian fiction book that I've read, you know? Because the last few um, Christian fiction books that I've read have been, like, the Left Behind series, which is, like, 
all about like the rapture and um, the tribulation and all of that, like very intense books, right? And then I've also read um, The Identity Theft and um, The Jerusalem Secret by Ron Cantor, which those are also kind of intense. This is more like daily life stuff, but these people are, you know, Christians and the theme of like Jesus and forgiveness, um, yeah, friendship, all of that is like very strong. This is part of a series which I didn't realize, so you can actually kind of see it on the back. I think the first book might be Faithful. Um, I haven't read any other books by her, so I'm starting out with this one. Um, yeah, I was trying to say I haven't read like any other books of the series. But I love when I can pick up a book that is a part of a series and um, it's not like I don't understand what's going on. So really good. Um, I guess I'll tell you. So this book is about, it's kind of about like a lot of characters, but I guess the main character, since it says it on the back of the book, is Kelly London and Heather Anderson. Kelly London is dealing with like hurt and heartbreak. So she once dreamed of being a songwriter. Um, but then like something happened in her life with this guy. His name is Brian. And she kind of stopped doing that. So in the book, she's basically kind of trying to figure out things. She's trying to find a job. Um, she has a boyfriend, but she's like, doing like long distance because she ended up like moving back with her family members I don't know if she has two brothers or not I think she has two and then she ends up running into Brian again and now Brian is he's still like studying to get his PhD but he's also doing music and he's like this successful Christian rapper so you kind of get to like see what happens between them and then Heather Anderson, she is like, she basically, okay, so she had an affair with a married man, right? Which I guess they talk about in that first book, Faithful. And you're basically kind of like learning about her life and why she does the things that she's doing. But then um, you're going to see that like she has a... I'll call it a moment of realization because I don't want to like spoil the book for you but you see her change course and so her and Kelly end up like interacting and becoming friends and so you're basically hearing about their lives um it's really really good like I really like the writing she does something in her books where it's like Sometimes she doesn't use, like, a complete sentence. So, if I said, like, the sky is blue, period, I've never seen that before, she would just put, like, the sky is blue and then say, like, never seen it before instead of, like, I've never. I know this is, like, something small, but I just, I like picking up on different authors, like, writing styles. And so... I thought that was cool because I was like, I didn't know that you could do that. Like, I thought when you're writing a book, like, you have to use, like, very formal, complete sentences. But it's actually really cool and um, it, it reads really smoothly, if that makes sense. This book takes place in St. Louis and I also found that interesting because even though I've traveled um I haven't really like taken in all the sites and stuff when I traveled and I'm not like it's not like I'm like constantly going places even where I live now so I feel like it would be hard for me to write like even based on my own city so I appreciate that too like I appreciate how she talks about St. Louis and yeah it's just really inspiring um yeah so there's my little book rant, you guys. Those are all the books that I've read so far, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and God willingly, I will have more. Bye.